me know when you're on the jacket. Okay, well done. OK, Tony, you can make your way to the work site. OK. Let me know when you get to the ammo, Tony. Be careful of all that debris that's on it. Tony? Tony? Can you hear me, Tony? Take dive control. Get the standby driver in the water and got a problem with the diver. Roger! Press the standby, Roger. It is the nightmare that awaits every diving team throughout every dive whether it's offshore or onshore. The diver is in difficulties, and no one knows how or why. The life of the diver may well depend upon how well the diving team responds in the next few minutes. This will be determined by their training and how well prepared they were before the dive began. The roles of both standby diver and tender are vital to the diving team. The tender's first job is to check out properly the diver's equipment before he puts it on. This means sticking to the checklist, covering every item each time. It's time-consuming, repetitive and boring, but it's essential that it's done thoroughly every time. Right, Tony, this dive, you'll be going down at this first level. It's about uh, not very deep. 18, the standby diver must always be an experienced diver, selected because he is capable of responding well in an emergency, and not because his name happens to be next on the roster. He must attend the diver's briefing, for if an incident occurs, all attention will be devoted to getting him into the water. It will be too late for him to start finding out about the diver's tasks or surroundings. Be careful, because it looks like that has damaged the anode, because it is cracked. He should note whether the diver's position will change during the course of the dive and if there are any possible hazards in the vicinity of the work site. Okay. The standby diver must be certain that he is familiar with all of the diver's equipment. The tender continues to check this equipment while the diver puts it on. He shows the diver where his pneumo tube and bailout bottle gauge are. Can you give me the uh, diver's checks, please? OK, Nigel, his hat is on, his neck clamp's on, his pin is in. His helmet is secure. His bailout is open and neck, close the hat. He has 200 bar in his bailout. Diving is a team operation. Although the supervisor is in charge, he depends upon each member of the team following the correct procedures. The supervisor is informed once the diver is ready to go into the water. Come down on the winch. Okay, coming down on the winch. Let me know when you're in the water, Tony. OK. Left surface. Roger. The jobs of both tender and standby diver are full-time. They both need to be alert and attentive at all times. It is the tender's responsibility to mind the umbilical. He must be sure to feel the diver without actually pulling on the line. Never tie up the umbilical. If you need a cup of tea, get someone to bring it to you. Tending the umbilical is too important a job to be left. The standby diver must get as ready to go into the water as is realistically possible. He must be on a separate gas supply to the diver, and he must wear all his equipment except his helmet. Being fully prepared to intervene at any time means that the standby diver must understand where the diver is working and what he is doing. Equipment should be provided to enable him to listen to all communications between the diver and the supervisor. And keep your eye on that debris that's hung off it. Oh, Tony. Tony. 
Two hundred. Can you hear me? Back dive control. Back dive control. We've got a standby diver dressed in the water. We've got an emergency on our hands. Roger. Dress the standby. Roger. Then, if an emergency should occur, he will know what to expect and won't need a lengthy briefing. Generally, the tender should not immediately haul in the umbilical, but wait for instructions. Depending on the diver's situation, the supervisor may order the tender to haul in the umbilical before the standby diver reaches the casualty. But he must be prepared to stop quickly, should the diver stop breathing. The standby diver enters the water. How he deals with the situation will depend on his training, his experience, and his ability to cope in an emergency. During their training, all divers took part in recovery of unconscious diver exercises. Many will have also participated in exercises during their careers. The first priority of the standby diver is to take care of his own safety. The diving team is unlikely to be able to deal with a second casualty. Having thoroughly prepared himself, he can get into the water quickly. Once underwater, the standby diver swims along the diver's umbilical. Got his umbilical. OK, you're following the diver's umbilical, Roger. Going down. At every stage, he tells the supervisor where he is and what he is doing. It is imperative that the supervisor understands what is going on at all times. He is the team leader and has the ability and authority to make the crucial decisions. Once the standby diver sees the casualty, he tells the surface. And if he's certain that he is not exposing himself to any danger, he approaches the casualty. The first priority is to ensure or restore the diver's air supply so that whatever has happened, the diver will not drown. He first opens the free flow valve. Should there be no gas, he closes the valve and opens the valve to the bailout bottle. A third possible source of air supply is the pneumo tube. Whatever the means of supply, gas must be made available immediately. The next priority is to get the casualty out of the area of immediate danger. If the situation allows, and provided that the casualty is breathing and has a good air supply, the ascent to the surface can include scheduled decompression stops. To avoid the risk of lung barotrauma, the standby must encourage the casualty to exhale. In a real emergency, it is likely that difficult decisions will need to be taken by the standby diver and supervisor. The diver's got gas, Roger. This is why it is essential for the standby diver to keep reporting his actions. 